Yo my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host Jason, thank you so so much for stopping by. Um, today I have a playthrough, uh, something a little bit heavier, and when I say heavy, I don't mean uh, mechanism wise, I mean physically <laughs> pretty heavy. I know you can't really tell how heavy this thing is, but take my word for it. Uh, this is Obsession. Um, designed by uh, Dan Halligan, published by Kind of Games. I'd like to thank you for providing me a complimentary copy so that I can do this playthrough. Um, this is with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion. And let me just show you just for a bit. So just to kind of give you a set, just to kind of give you a sense, um, check that out, that in the, some of the inside stuff. Uh, normally, you know, you just chuck the inserts, but you don't want to chuck the, uh, uh, the stuff that this comes with. So like these are the player powers. This is where you store the tiles and everything. Uh, very, very sweet uh, looking package. Very classy. Of course it's classy. It's a game about Victorian England. It's a game about uh, upping your class. You start off with uh, paltry prestige and paltry reputation and you have to build yourself up to be uh, the most prestigious family in all the land that you can be. Uh, so... It is a one to four player, mid light to mid weight ish uh, resource management game that I think excels in the solo. Um, there is a solo bot in the base game. Uh, the expansion comes with a specialized mode for solo, which is the mode, the solo estate challenge, that I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, so without further ado, let me go um, take it to the videotape and show you Obsession with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion. All right, welcome to the base game of Obsession. So I will not be playing the base game today. I'll be playing a variant called the Solo Estate Challenge, uh, which comes in the expansion Upstairs Downstairs. But I wanted to just give a sense for how the base game worked, and that way you kind of have a little bit of a better context about what the game, the core of the game really is before I get into that expansion. So then it's a three-part management exercise. You're managing your cards, you're managing your tiles, and you're managing these little meatballs which are called servants. So then on your turn what you're going to be doing is you're going to pick an activity and I say we are going to go to the bowling green and we are going to have a good time whatever we do at the bowling green. So then uh, you host an activity right and then uh, you take this footman, so it's like a servant, imagining, you know, we're hosting a party. Come, go servants, we must prepare the grounds, we must make everybody happy. Uh, so this is what the servants do, right? Uh, they're designed to make people happy. You're going to be doing that every single turn. So then, uh, not only do you host the, the party and you hopefully get the benefit, you also invite uh, guests out of your hand. So then some of the guests are really easy. You just kind of play this card. There's no prerequisite. But some of the guests... Like uh, Miss Eleanor over here, you notice there's a purple meeple down here. That is another servant, so you have to bring her down here. And that means that I've hosted a party with this servant, this servant, and these cards. I get these benefits so that so you can get reputation. Reputation is tracked right over here. The higher the reputation, you can go from one to two to three. Uh, the more points you score and the more um, the higher level parties that you can host. And you get more stuff. So then... You can get reputation, you can get money, you can get extra cards. Everything about this game is baked on this particular part of um, the board that you're seeing over here. This is more of a common area. So then once you're done, uh, and you can discard the cards, and they go into the used area, then you can purchase improvements upon uh, your, um, wherever your, your player board. So then let's say I wanted to purchase this, this would move down, and I'd pull a new tile. Uh, so, I mean, that's really the heart of the game. Uh, you have to manage these servants because a lot of times you're going to want to host a big party and you don't have servants. <laughs> or you have so many servants that are waiting around here, but your hand is small. Or you uh, want to host a, a bigger, better party, but your, you know, your little tableau here is looking dinky and everybody's going, you know, the, your party's not very fun. I'm not going to come to your house. <laughs> that's exactly what these cards are telling you over here. Um, so management, management, management. Uh, obviously, if I was playing another round, these would go. Uh, this would go in the servant course. So they don't come back immediately, and then I would use more servants and have more activities. So, goal of the game is points. Reputation is points. Uh, tiles are points. You get objective cards. Objective cards are points. Uh, this here is a round tracker. In the base game, you are going to be competing for the favor of these very uh, the courtship. Uh, of these um, powerful nobles over here. 
Uh, that's in the base game, and it also in the solo challenge in the, that is comes in the base game. Uh, you're going to be competing for these very, very powerful cards, which will come every single you know little while. You'll be able to kind of play them depending on if you are the leader for that particular area. So that is uh, a basic game of Obsession. It's going to last you about 20 rounds in the extended game, shorter for the um, short game. But I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you something else. Let's go show you some upstairs, downstairs content. All right, we have zoomed up nice and close to the player board so that I can show you. These are the basic um, servants right over here. Uh, you got the butler and the handmaiden, or the head housekeeper, that's the one, the footman and a couple of other servants. Uh, and what the expansion adds, and this is kind of the main mechanical addition to upstairs, downstairs, are the additional servants. So uh, in a basic game of upstairs, downstairs, they, um, most of the servants tend to be mandatory. So then it says, I have to play a footman here, I have to play a footman. So here goes the footman, and then the lady over here says, I have to uh, be waited on by the lady's maid, so I'm going to be waited on by the lady's maid. However, let me get you guys out of here for a second. These servants over here perform specialized actions. So let's say I had a magical game where I'm playing um, <laughs> all of the servants. I can invite the cook. The cook is also going to be helping out and raises the reputation of the, um, the possible guests that I can uh, invite. I can invite twos and threes and fours and, and whatnot. Um, uh, the, the, the useful man uh, gives discounts to uh, purchasing over here. So he has disappeared over here. I'm going to go give a discount in the, in the builder's market. Here you go. He's gone. Uh, the, um, this guy over here can add money. So if this was, let's say I invited this guy over here too, uh, he would actually add 100 bucks. Uh, I mean, you just, I mean, look at you, a cloud of servants. And I think that's what the feel that the expansion is going for. It wants to kind of give you this sense that you're in an estate and it's covered in busyness and servants and people running up and down the stairs and frantic all behind the scenes so that all of the nobles uh, have a good time. Uh, thanks to the, to the uh, tireless efforts of many, many servants that are operating behind the scenes. All right, we're back at the big table, and I have laid out the solo estate challenge for Obsession. So you'll notice a number of changes. There is no builder's market. Uh, or no, well, there's a builder's market, but there's no bag that will be filling the market. Every tile uh, is available. I Once I've laid out every tile that is available for this challenge, uh, and I will be able to buy freely from any of these piles depending on the money that I have. I have no objective cards, none to get dealt at the start of the game. I have no courtship cards. Uh, missing a lot. They've really um, distilled the essence of, of managing the essence, the uh, estates over here, managing these tiles. Uh, and that is what this challenge is here uh, meant to do. Uh, I think of it like um, if anyone's ever played like Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty, there's like VR missions, <laughs> like training missions uh, that are challenging in and of themselves, but they're not like the real game. They're like they're there um, to provide an extra challenge and kind of help you hone your skills. Uh, in various ways and this challenge will definitely if you get good at this challenge you will definitely know the tiles uh there's one copy of all the base tiles everything else in that bag um are just copies of these tiles so you're going to know the tiles you're going to know the rhythm of the game uh and it provides all sorts of great benefits so going to be playing a basic game um the the opponent the solo bot is going to eat at these um piles and these are chits, so if I roll that d20 and I roll three to five, it's going to eat one of the uh, essentials um, tiles over there. All right, so I think that I have, oh, sorry about that. Uh, this is the new round tracker, so I'm gonna be playing 12 rounds, which is a base game of uh, the solo challenge. And my goal is to get maximum reputation and get uh, uh, make this three deep. So uh, not only will I have this one roll, I'll have two and three, no more, no less. And all the tiles will be flipped. So then if I use the study over here, once I use it, I flip it. Um, all of these tiles need to be showing this rows, indicate that I've used them once. So uh, a lot of management. I think um, I'm, I'm pretty terrible at this. I've yet to win it. Uh, but I figured I'd film my struggles. And hopefully uh, someone will, out there will learn uh, how to play. And, uh, all right, so we are ready to begin a game of Obsession, the solo challenge. Uh, first of all, um, I shouldn't be starting with this thing. Get out of here. I, just, I think I put that there to just taunt myself. <laughs> um, I do start with no money. I am the York faction because I am from New York. 
no other reason. I have no um, loyalty to this faction. They do get an extra footman, so I'll uh, distinguish them over here. And also, um, I have drafted the hall boy. Uh, there's a servant draft that you can do at the beginning of upstairs, downstairs, and I've drafted uh, my young man over there. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm actually going to kind of get this out of the way. Um, in a normal game, this is actually a choice, right? Uh, you, um, your family meets in the private study, and they determine whether they want to go to the village fair. Uh, sometimes they just want to hang above the fray and take the prestige. Uh, and we don't want to mess with the riffraff. Or they say, let's go to the village fair. Let's uh, sully our names or risk sullying our names because there's money and fun. And perhaps if we uh, are beneficent to people, we can up our reputation. So uh, because this solo challenge requires all tiles to be flipped, I'm going to have to flip this thing and uh, get some buck buckaroos uh, when the village fair comes out. So I'm going to put that right there. And it says that I have to bring the butler. There you go. And invite two family members. Family members have these crests. They do not have the the the, um, presti uh, the, the pres reputation uh, mark over here. So I'm going to invite... Um, the Viscountess, because I know I'm going to need cards, and I am also going to invite uh, ooh, the Viscount over here because I know I'm going to need money. Uh, those are the two things that you really need at the beginning of the game uh, in order to really get going. Uh, okay, and Paul Boy, oh boy, my shoes need to be shined. I have uh, my I lemonade is getting cold. Please get me ice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, be, be a good boy, and I'll give you an extra tip. So, look what happens. He gets an extra tip. Uh, he is going to get an extra 100 coins along with the 200 uh, over here. So, I'm going to acquire 300 coin, uh, pounds. And also, I get to pull two cards. Uh, that's what this means. I get this total quote, screen the guest. So, I can pull two cards and keep one. Whoa, so we have some big reputation over here. Uh, so we have both twos, so I won't be able to use them for a while. So I think I'm going to prioritize, um, you know, getting reputation so that I can actually use them. Oh, boy. Um, so she gives uh, a prestige and 200 coins, and he gives one and two. So um, what I'm going to do is I already have in my hand... Um, Someone who requires a handmaiden, and I don't think I want to get a hand, a lady's maid, uh, sorry, a lady's maid that early. So I'm going to uh, go with the gentleman over there, and hopefully I can pull something, some good cards. Okay. Okay. Take care of that card over there. Okay. Um, so normally, um, we would wait a little, we would wait until after the builder's round, but I'm just for the sake of the film, I'm going to do the cleanup round right now. So I go... Uh, so these two go into expended service, and they're going to be hanging out in the service quarters. Um, going to flip that tile over here. Going to discard. Okay, so now let's go over to the builder's market. All right, so here we are at the builder's market. Um, I'm giving you the overhead shot so that you can see the prices very clearly. Um, so I have 300 coins, and I basically am stuck you know, uh, at this pile over here. Um, but I'm actually going to hold off for now. I'm not quite sure how this game is going to go uh, just yet. And I don't, and uh, I don't, I'm not required to just buy one tile a turn. I can, you know, um, buy multiple tiles at a turn so I can kind of make up for it. And I don't think there's a power available that really makes a difference right now. Uh, okay. So I am going to uh, roll the dice for the bot. I'm going to roll a 10. So then you go over here, that's 9 to 11. I take, uh, so there's, uh, you go 2 down. So it's like, if I roll a 9, it'll be this one. And then I roll a 10, so uh, the flower room is bye-bye. All right, time for round 2. All right, so the private study uh, is in effect over here. So when I hit that third round, as you saw on the round tracker, I'm going to get 300 coins and 2 rep. Uh, so let's go and make some more headway. Okay, so what I want to do this time is because I drew a two reputation gentleman and I want to get him going fairly soon, I am going to go to the parlor for a game of whist. Uh, the, the, the ladies are coming out and they will be uh, entertaining 
and being um, and doing whatever they do. I am a gentleman over here, so I have no idea what they're doing <laughs> in the front parlor. Okay, so I have to I have to use ladies. Uh, good thing I have a couple. Uh, so I will use. I only have two ladies. I have to use uh, them. So this lady over here would give me two reputation if accompanied by a prestige guest. Two fleur de lises. I don't have that yet, but. Uh, uh, getting an extra card will be nice to kind of keep my hand going. And I have my lady over here who, uh, she's a little bit of an advanced guest. She is the second youngest of seven sisters. So um, not that great. I don't want the second youngest, but she is from a highly regarded Yorkshire family. So she is welcome uh, to come with me. So uh, the handmaid, uh, the, uh, the head house, head housemaid, I think it is, uh, gets over here. My lady's maid is laying down on the job. Uh, but she is going to uh, perform service for um, Miss Eleanor. So the reason why I did that is because uh, this is worth the reputation. This is worth two reputation. I get to one, two, three, four, five. Uh, jump ahead on the reputation track. So I was able to get one whole reputation from that. And also uh, I get to pick a card. Um, this one I don't get too much choice on. It is, ooh, this is actually pretty good. Uh, so another uh, source of income for me. That's excellent. All right, so my money situation hasn't changed, but my board has. Uh, I have two um, play uh, people who require valets. So, and I don't want to kind of pass turn or do anything like that just yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to purchase the brushing room. The brushing room, footmen on staff are now trained as valets when needed, which is excellent uh, because now I have the extra footmen because I'm York and, you know, I now have extra valet capacity. It only cost me 100 coins, so uh, I consider that a deal. I have 200 left and I'm ready to strike uh, <laughs> uh, with a big play next turn, so we'll see how that works out for me. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that die. I rolled a one. Well, I would have lost out on the I, I would have lost out on the valet thing had I not bought it right there. So I'm gonna get rid of the carriage house. I wasn't planning on uh, using the carriage house anyway. Uh, thank you for demonstrating how um, the bot can indeed get in your way. Die. On to round three, the village fair. Okay, we are on to round three. As you can uh, as you saw from the round tracker, it is now the village fair. So at the beginning of the turn, I get three hundred coins. So I'm going ahead and make that uh, trade right there and two reputation. Uh, did I need to play um, that two reputation uh, person from our last turn? Not really, but um, you know the, the name of the game is reputation. You need eight maximums. So <laughs> uh, as much as I can get going. So. Uh, let's add up even more money. Let's let's go up to the Bowling Green. Uh, so the Bowling Green, I'll be able to... Uh, I know a little bit more about this as a gentleman. Uh, we are going to be a wagering a friendly wager. We are going to uh, play a game of croquet, perhaps. A gentleman's game. And a friendly wager that would benefit the house. So I have two reputations, so I can invite my gentleman over there. Well, first of all, I need to bring a footman. Footman's going to be a pair over there. Uh, and then I'm going to invite my gentleman over there. Uh, he is the uh, Count Hoyos. He is uh, mysterious, uh, but for some uh, for some reason he is very connected. So he's going to be attracting servants or attracting uh, people to my um, place because he is here. And also I have Sir Reginald Beeston. Um, he loves music. Uh, and I have plenty of music for him. So uh, we've actually trained a musician over here. Uh, he did. He couldn't play music before, but we get we whipped him in the shape, and he is now valet, and he can satisfy the requirement. All right. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to use this guy yet, uh, or maybe I did. I didn't use him on the second turn. Uh, he is back in the service quarters, and he is going to accompany the valet over here for an extra little bit of do. Uh, so I'm feeling really good about. Um, what I am able to do. So uh, he's over here going, oh, tell me more stories, play more music. Oh, you said you flatter me, boy. Here, having a, having a little bit of uh, <laughs> extra 100 pounds. Excellent. So that is 300, 600. So I get 600. So I'm sitting at 1,100 coins thanks to the village fair and everything else that's happened. And also thanks to my man over here, I get to pick uh, another um, 
valet card, but I have valet capacity, so that definitely helps me. And, ooh, whoa, this is actually within reach for me. I have a, a three. Uh, this is the beautiful daughter of Viscount Hampton. Will uh, get net me some uh, more stuff. Well, as you get into the, the better cards, they'll get you more stuff. Uh, but I have to be very careful because she also requires a lady's maid. All right. Uh, so I'm feeling really good about that turn. Um, okay. They are all going to go, like I said, uh, normally we go to the builder's market before cleanup, but, you know, just for camera work's sake, uh, all these will go into the expended service. They are going to cycle. Uh, this is going to go back. All right, this up just finished my round three, and I'm going to discard these two cards. All right, so I'm feeling really good about that turn. I got a lot of money, um, and I am set up to get a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase a monument. Oh, ho, ho, early monument is the best. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase a blue one, the large wine cellar. Uh, so that will cost me 1,000 gold, leaving me with 100 left. The reason I'm buying this one is because... Uh, the servant, while these have abilities that are pretty uh, powerful and good, uh, you can't go there. Um, so they don't leave me like kind of a path forward whenever I want to play um, uh, guys over here. So unfortunately, um, you know, this isn't as useful as I want it to be. So I'm going to occupy my second slot of blue with a monument. All right, uh, with 100 um, coins left, I can't really do much, so let's go ahead and roll that solo up oh, and 20. 20 means no purchase, nothing happens. Here comes round four. All right, so for my fourth round, um, I, I, you know, again, trying to plan ahead as much as possible. I have a lot of servants locked up in here, um, so, I need to be able, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, I want to try to make a big score, but, you know, I do have a lot of servants locked up. So I'm actually going to use, well, first of all, actually, uh, I got the large wine cellar, which gives a reputation every single turn. Excellent. Love that. Uh, okay. So, but, so like I was saying, I'm going to uh, get the butler's room going. So the butler's room, hire two servants from the supply. It just takes the butler. You can't play cards with it. Um, but it has to happen. Uh, it's one of those things that's just kind of necessary for the game. And, you know, using ser uh, having servants around definitely helps. So I'm going to get, um, because I have uh, two purple guests, I'm going to get another handmaiden. And I'm also going to get the cook. Uh, I have a feeling that I'm going to start um, because I have a couple of guests that provide uh, increased... Uh, the prestige cards are going to be hitting these pretty early. So I want the cook. The cook is, uh, I can uh, send them off and I'll be able to invite higher level guests uh, to my uh, uh, to my events. Uh, the cook, um, you know, uh, basically uh, I may be uh, kind of hosting dinky events, but my cook's plum pudding is famous the world around. So I get to uh, attract a higher level of, um, <laughs> of, um, guest so uh, that's going to go in the expended service we're going to rotate there you go uh, we get to flip that i don't really get uh too much for that but it was nice to be able to kind of restock um and you know prepare myself for future rounds all right so i'm continuing to not really put too much of a dent into the market i did buy a um a mining which i'm very very happy with but i need to start kind of working through these piles and that will hopefully begin next turn so uh, let's go ahead and roll. A one, perfect. I was not going to buy another one of these anyway. Ooh, uh, not something that is not a part of the base game, but is a part of the expansion, the Grand Ball. All right, here I am. Um, kind of have an imbalanced game over here. Um, I only can go one place. <laughs> I haven't bought a lot of tiles that I can do stuff with. I'm kind of running a cash pour. Um, but I'm feeling really good about my hand. I think I'm getting some really powerful cards. And also, I have a, a couple of chances at some more powerful cards. I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing, uh, as you saw from the round marker, is time for the Guild Ball. Uh, the Guild Ball is I draw three um, cards from the pile, and I get to decide which one I want to do. Uh, okay, well, first of all, uh, so I see this lady over here. I think I'm going to get rid of her now because I'm not really optimized. 
for um, ladies maids so we can just get rid of her right now and um, looking at my options over here he's very labor intensive I like him um, you know extra money is always good but you know I, I and I'm set up for him but I think you know I think I can manage the five reputation over here and take advantage uh, I'm gonna go from gusto so uh, we're gonna do that okay so I'm going to do the option that I can do, which is the main gazebo. Here comes that guy. Uh, and I'm going to invite over with the head cook. So my main gazebo is a little bit tattered. Oh, I, I, I <laughs> look at that, I have a reminder token here. And I did not do that, but there you go. Um, my gazebo is a little bit tattered, it's getting there. Um, but uh, word has gone far and wide of the cook's plum pudding. Oh, give me some pudding. Uh, I have pudding for everybody. Please come, Mrs. Uh, Regina Washburn. Uh, she is looking like my first pr uh, uh, pristine guest, and she does some good stuff for me. So I'm going to give her a lady's maid, and she's going to do some great stuff. Uh, and then the other person that's going to come along is my friend. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use one that does not... Well, no, actually, you know, I'll use this one just in case I need him back. Uh, in a little bit so uh, a pretty simple card over there he is going to take a valet and also the head boy is gonna come in and say please uh, uh, the last two men have been very happy with my shoe shines would you like me to shoe sign again of course my boy I here have some a little bit of a tip for your services wonderful so we get 200 more pounds uh, which is 300 which is not great but I think I can work around it I get a reputation, so now I am at three reputation. Getting there. And I get another prestige guest. I also get a prestige guest from the tile. So, ooh, number six. Hmm, I think I know where, where this game is headed. Uh, and then we got another guest. Oh my goodness, and then they're all money. <laughs> they're all money. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, money that I don't have, money that I will have when I can, if I can play these these gentlemen. But uh, we'll see what exactly what happens with that. So I am sitting here with three hundred gold. Uh, I only have one option. Uh, you, you can't do everything in this game, and I have a feeling I'm going to play a couple things better. But I think this will help. So I'm going to use my three hundred, and I'm going to buy the morning room. Uh, so obviously I would have liked to buy a bigger point tile, but this is the thing that I can buy. It lets me play three gentry, uh, and we know which three gentry I have in mind to play off of that. Uh, so I am now broke, and let's see what the mar the, the game does to me. Two, wow. <laughs> wow, no way. So I'm just going to take more service tiles out of the game. Next round. All right, so this is a normal round, um, and I don't have, I mean, I could use the morning room, but that would be pretty useless at this point. So what I'm gonna do is, even though I have some cards in my hand, I'm going to pass. Um, and so I, I, what, I, what that means is I get to take these cards back, so I'm going to be uh, loaded for bear coming forward. Uh, I get to refresh all of my servants, and I get to uh, do one of three things. I can either refresh the market, which I actually can't do in the solo challenge. So I can either get 200 coins or hire servants, which is two servants. No brainer. Even though I don't have money, I think I'm going to have some money coming in next turn. Uh, so we're going to take the headman. Here he is over here. Uh, now, my waiting room is getting really crowded. And of course, because I have so many male guests, I'm going to get another valet. Last but certainly not least, I get to collect one reputation from the money. If I had any money, I'd be able to um, uh, acquire a tile, but I do not have any money. I have a feeling that might bite me in the butt, but <laughs> it's nothing that I can do. Oh, number 12, it actually takes away a real tile. Um, I think I'm past the one tile anyway, so even though the retirement might have been good, uh, I need to make start making some big plays over here if I'm gonna do well in the solo challenge. National holiday, uh, gonna have to make a big move here. I have a ton of cards over here. Uh, and as you saw from the round track rate, it is a national holiday. Um, so what the national holiday means is that I can invite any level guest and I can use any level tile. Very unfortunate that I only have one of these tiles to use, but I will not let it go to waste. 
So we are going to get the uh, head, head made over here. And we are going to invite my three biggest prestige cards, which I acquired last turn. Okay. Uh, so I just have a big blowout party. <laughs> With, of course, the head boy. Oh, head boy. <laughs> uh, carrying, uh, carrying some water over there. Um, so I have invited three, uh, the three musketeers or the three wise men or however you want to <laughs> consider uh, this gaggle of um, dignitaries. So the first thing I do is I'm going to get a VP card. Uh, I'll go ahead and grab that in a second. Um, I get, so, well, actually the first thing I do is get money, but that's okay. So I get three, four, um, 10, 1,500 pounds. Big turn, big turn. Okay. So that died. that's why I wasn't too concerned. I would have liked to have had a bigger tile to play over here, but at least I knew I was getting the money once I got these these patrons. Um, two reputation, always helpful. And uh, we are going to get some uh, a VP card. See what I get. Oh, and uh, I should have serviced these. Uh, let's just say I have these three valets over here for uh, servicing. Beautiful. Remember, I have that tile that says I can use a footman as a valet. All right, here's my VP card. I get to have three VP, or if I want to chuck this, I get to have an extra 200 pounds. I may need that, even though I have the 1,500. I'm ready to make a big play for some... Uh... All right, so I think I've made the final decision on purchases over here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the big game room. Uh, getting two reputation a turn sounds pretty sweet. Uh, and I am going to go for this, which is the uh, Hillside Kennels. I need money next turn. I'm going to be poor, <laughs> having just spent. Uh, so that is 800, 900, and then this one is 500, 1400 coins. So that leaves me this one paltry uh, pound left. Um, and the reason I'm buying this one and not this one is because I don't have a lot of powerful gentlemen. Um, so even though I'm taking a little bit of a hit um, money-wise, like minus 100, I kind of have to do it that way because I don't. I played. I played my gentleman already, so I think it was worth it because that big play let me get the second monument. Uh, so we shall see if that actually works out for me. 18. Ooh, don't think I'm going to be buying a third monument anyway, so that's fine. All right, next round. All right, on to the next round. Nothing crazy happens. I get two reputation. I'm up to four. Um, and I have one space. So I think I'm going to be doing that for a little bit. Just kind of like buying and using, buying and using. Uh, okay, so I have one valley left, or one footman left. There he goes. And I have some ladies who want to be, enjoy themselves in the hillside kennels while the Ben um, wager. The ladies are admiring the um the the dogs uh and having a little westminster dog show right there so here we go I, i'm really excited to play this card because i think i want to reload with a um another prestige card uh to play I, and i think i'll have the ability to do so uh let's see so we are going to play that and that over there um and I get a third gentry to play. Don't have a ton of options over here, but uh, because I am broke, going to bring a family member right there for 200. So I'm gonna get 200 and also 300 from the tile itself, making six. That gives me a path forward to play, uh, to buy another uh, tile. And I will also get two reputation, a third reputation, doing pretty good on rep. Uh, and I get to pull a prestige guest. Perfect. I can I can play him. He's going to give me a lot of money. I felt feel really good about that. Great. All right. I'm going to do something maybe the, <laughs> a little bit uh, on the silly end, but why not? Am I going to have a little bit of fun? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase the West Saloon. Uh, so the West Saloon is a pretty significant uh, thing, and, I, and I'm going to be using seven gentry. Uh, but I think I can manage that. Um, 
So, and it only cost me 500, which would leave me with the paltry 100 that I see, seem to be persistently uh, having in this game. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll. Three. Wow, it's, uh, oh, it uh, took the breakfast room away from me. Uh, but my um, essentials row is full. So I, these are the only two that I'm really concerned about. Hopefully the builder's market is good to me and leaves those to me for the uh, later rounds. Time for another village fair. Here comes some money and reputation. All right, time to village fair it up. 300 coins and two reputation. So putting me at five. And I have two monuments. That puts me a little bit further. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use the West Saloon. I'm going to use my butler. And I have seven gentry to use. So, and I have all my valets. So that's uh, the reason, well, part of the reason why I wanted to take advantage of that. Because uh, I can use all my valets. So I have one, two three, four gentlemen to play who provide me, and I, I meet the reputation requirements for all of them, who provide me with, or I can provide them with one, two, three, four, and a hall boy. Hi, hall boy. <laughs> I'm loving me some hall boy over there. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to um, bring some more lemonade for the gentleman. We're going to uh, shine some more shoes. And I have three more people to bring. So, um, and this is another really good one. So uh, this is a, a, a family member. I think I showed you her before. She gives me a prestige guest. And she gets me two reputation if I bring a prestige male who is right there. Uh, it is the grandson of lowborn merchants who have risen high and uh, wants to take out my uh, Viscountess. All right, and I have two more to go. Um, I think I'm going to bring these two. Uh, she would allow me to kind of like mill for a uh, casual guest, but I think I'm past casual guest at this point. Um, and her later power would have been to trash a guest, like there's guests in there that, that take away reputation, but I've managed to stay away from those, so get out of here. All right, so I'm getting a bunch of stuff. Okay, so we are getting up oh, the, the pool boy, the hall boy has to be here. So you get three hundred from here, nine hundred, a thousand. Um, I think I'm going to take eleven hundred. I think I'm going to need the money. I think I get. I'm think I'm getting reputation pretty good. So I'm going to take the twelve hundred. Beautiful. Uh, reputation next. Uh, looks like I'm only getting two total reputation, which I'm just fine with. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, considering I have a lot of money. I'll be able to kind of like make a big play for reputation moving forward. Um, and I get a prestige, uh, a casual guest, a prestige guest. I get two casual guests and a prestige. So my two casual guests. Uh, okay, that actually works out pretty good for me if I wanted to play this next turn because uh, she, I, I have a, I'll have an available maid. And speak of the devil, oh no, he doesn't take reputation, he takes away money. Uh, what a bum. <laughs> a pauper, look at that. <laughs> a pauper, um, the English version of a, I guess, a BUM. Uh, so I get to keep both of these and I get to pull a prestige guest. Um, actually, that's pretty good for the reputation. I'd rather have had a higher um, result from that, but that should be okay. Uh, a fire destroyed reads read mana taking the lives of other uh, the respected countesses, uh, husband and child. So these are, she's a widower. We have to take care of her. Uh, we'll see what we can do with that. All this stuff, uh, all these gets go into the used pile. I'm gonna move them over to the servants' quarters. I get to flip this, which is worth a juicy five points, and all of this goes in the discard pile. Okay, so I think my choices are pretty clear. If I want to end the game in 12 rounds, I pretty much only have two plays left and I have four open slots. Um, I can play past the rounds, you know, just to kind of turn over all the tiles and give myself time to get to max reputation. But, uh, you know, that's a, a penalty uh, if I do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to play a little bit big. I'm going to get another monument. 
This is the last monument that I can get because I'm already full on the brown. Um, so this one is going to cost me 1100 uh, The benefit of this is that I, you know, I don't have to flip it. Um, so I'm only going to have to play one extra round. So that's for 1100 And then I am going to... The other th tile I'm going to take is the English Garden. Um, so that is something that the headman could help me with. Um, I'm going to... I. He has a couple of uses. One of them is to increase the value of the village fair, which I forgot to do. Um, so I'm not going to take that one. But he does, if I do play him here, he's going to give me a discount. So I have 500 left. I spent 1100 on the on the monument. And this is 500 So that's exactly what that's going to work out to. Great. Let us uh, roll an 8. So it takes a billiard room. So at this point, I don't think the... The um, bot can do too much damage unless he hits me right here, which will, uh, that's not going to be so great. On to the next round. All right, so as I look at my board, I'm probably going to go over by a round. And I don't think that's too terrible because, um, as you saw, it only gives you a minus five. So uh, let's uh, try to work with that. So I gain two reputation, which would take me to six. However, I think I'm going to use the special action of re of um, refreshing a servant, which takes me back down to five, which is, uh, I'm not sure if I want or need to do that, but I think, uh, I think I'm, let's, let's, let's give it a try. Okay, so we're actually gonna go here. The servant I refreshed is a footman. Uh, the footman is going to allow me to take a prestige guest. And I have three ladies, exactly three ladies that I want to bring to, town okay so then here are two uh, ladies maids and I get a uh, hundred coins 100 pounds uh, three reputation that puts me at six uh, and uh, I get to pick two and uh, trash one Ooh, more money, the American heiress, but I think at this point uh, I don't want to take the reputation hit. Um, I'm falling, I'm kind of falling behind here, so I think that's going to kind of be a no-brainer. I'm going to take this lady over here. She is uh, Lady Mary, uh, who will get me uh, some things. Cool. And the last thing I'm going to do on my turn is, uh, oh, I put that back a little too, too soon. I, um, I reset everybody, but... Um, I never did this, so uh, C2, prestige guests, take one. So both of them provide what stuff. He provides a little bit more money. She provides... Um... Okay, I'm going to go with him just in case I want to keep things going and activate another turn. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work out, uh, but we shall see. I have 100 gold. I can't buy anything. So um, we're just going to get rid of a 15. Uh, I couldn't use that anyway. So bye-bye. Builder's Holiday, which in the expansion, or at least in the solo challenge, means something a little bit different. All right, so now I have to build this holiday. I, feel, I have a feeling I'm kind of ending this game with a little bit of whimper. Uh, I may have just really paid for using 7 Gentry. I don't know if that was <laughs> the smartest move. Uh, I'm sure, Dan, uh, you're watching this and you'll let me know uh, where I could have gone, where I went terribly wrong. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pass. I think I just, I don't have enough. I don't have anything to turn over. Um, I could just use a tile, but I don't want to use a tile for the sake of it. I'm going to pass. I'm going to just get my stuff back. I'm going to renew my servants. Um... I don't have uh, any real use for servants at this point, so I'm just going to get the 200 coins, uh, put my tail between my legs, and... <laughs> oh, lordy, that was uh, some unfortunate turn of events over there. So the, 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 the bad thing is I have a 100 um, coin discount, and I could also use the servant for another horn discount. That would be... That would make give me the 5... Hundred, but that is, um, you know what? Just to kind of complete the game, 
um, I mean, this is not the best use of resources in the world. I'm just going to take the fence paddock because I can afford it. Uh, so then with the with the builder's holiday and with the minus 100, um, I'm just going to go ahead and take that. Uh, so I have something to do next turn. I get rid of an 11, which is going to be uh, not a big deal. Technically the final round if I don't want a penalty. All right, so I've calculated that I need 900 uh, gold or pounds or whatever uh, in order to purchase the tile that I want to purchase up there. So I'm going to go here. There you go. Uh, unfortunately, the power here is to dismiss one guest, but I don't have a, a minus guest that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to ferret out um, two... Uh, try to kind of maximize my benefit. I have so many cards over here. Look at my hand. Ah, <laughs> oh, so many cards. So let me go ahead, dig, dig, dig through, and uh, get what I what I uh, wanted to get. All right. I don't even need any shenanigans. I'm just gonna put my two most powerful people over here. So that gets me 900. And uh, sorry about that. I used valets, and I'm also using the hall boy over here for an extra uh, bit of cash, and also two reputation that puts me at seven. At least I did that. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go ahead and clean that up. And go ahead and fish out the tile. This is a no brain over here. It is the most powerful um, state room that I can get. Uh, lots of, I have, I have the gentry for it. I have the money for it. It costs 700 plus 200, 900, which is exactly what I planned for, with 100 hall boy <laughs> money to spare. Doesn't matter because I'm ending the game at this turn. Um, so that's an 8. Uh, doesn't, yeah, so I'm just going to do that for official sake, but doesn't matter. This is my last round. Final round. Here is my minus 5 penalty. All right. Uh, so... Here I am, I'm uh, two reputation in. Um, very last round, as you can see, I'm one over, uh, but the Villa Fair did hit. I get two more reputation and 200 coins. Uh, going to use the stateroom, which would max me out. Um, so just using the stateroom would max me out. So then that these guys go over there. Um, the butler is right there. And I just need to dig through my giant hand and <laughs> figure out who I want to play. All right, I think I figured out who I'm playing. Uh, so we are going to do this first. So we're going to do him, who has, remember the valet is a foot, or the footman is a valet for me. And I'm also going to do another thing. So like I'm going to refresh a valet, which would cost me, uh, take me below max. But I'm going to get that back quickly because I am playing her, which helps me recover that uh, reputation that I lost because I'm playing her with a male prestige guest. And I'm going to play uh, with her, which allows me uh, to get to back to max. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and give her a servant. And then, uh, or a, uh, yes, a servant, I can call her servant. And then I'm going to play these last two. So then uh, she gets a servant as well. And that was that. So that reputation doesn't do anything, but I get a prestige. So I'm going to do the money first, and that's important because it's points. Uh, two, three, uh, plus six is 900. Change. And then um, uh, one prestige guest. Two prestige guests, or one casual guest, two casual guests, and two prestige guests. At this point, it's just points. So, two points right there. And, oh, uh, that's, I'm sorry. Oh, hoo hoo. Uh, I got an American heiress. That's minus one point. That's what I get for pulling. Uh, and I get three more points off of the cards over here. So, I guess I knitted out positive. All right, and that is it. And that is a game of Obsession, the Solo Challenge. Let's add up score and see how I did. All right. I have done the liberty of adding up the score. Um, 135 total, which the, um, the board asked for 132, which I'm happy about that. However, I got minus 5 for taking one round too long. So I got 130. I fell short of the target. And I'm not going to play another round. 
Uh, I'm pretty happy with the game so far. I came pretty close, um, a lot closer than I, than I have before. And I hope that the main function uh, of the game was fulfilled, which is to show you the game, show you the solo challenge, and uh, see if you guys, um, see if you make the determination for yourself whether this game is worth a buy with the upstairs, downstairs expansion. I like it. I'm keeping it. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. Sorry, I didn't get to role play more, but my British accent is fairly terrible. <laughs> All right, so um, I hope you enjoyed that shelf story. This is Jason reminding you that if you could change your mind, you could change the world. And until next time, later, everybody. Mm -hmm.